In this video I'll explain my approach to photographing green winged orchids using the Olympus EM1 Mark III. I'll be using two lenses, the 300mm f4 coupled with the MC14 converter, which will give an effective focal length of 420mm. I'll also be using the 60mm macro lens, and in this video I'll be showing the different results each lens produces. Fortunately, not that far away from where I live in Colchester, so there's a very, very good green wind orchid meadow. And literally, second or third week of May, you come here and there's thousands of them here. The lens that I'm using to photograph them is actually the 300mm with a 1.4 converter on. And that really is not normal. You wouldn't normally do use that lens. Most people probably use a macro lens for flower photography. But I use this lens because it gives me the option of throwing the background out of focus. So using the 300mm with a 1.4 converter on, I'll be photographing this particular orchid from about 10 foot away. Because I'm using a long lens, it gives me a very, very limited depth of field. So everything behind the orchid and in front of the orchid is going to be well out of focus. And it will make the subject stand out quite dramatically from the background. I can actually use the 60mm macro. There I would be actually photographing from about 12 inches away from the actual picture. Uh, and then I will actually show you pictures where, that are taken with this long lens combination and taken with a 60mm lens. And you can then see the difference. These two pictures show the different results that you get when using the 300mm plus the MC14 converter, giving an effective focal long length of 420mm, and the 60mm macro lens. Both pictures are satisfactory, but I find the limited depth of field that you get with the long lens helps to throw the background and foreground out of focus and makes the subject stand out a lot better. There's nothing wrong with a picture taken with the 60mm, and I do use this lens an awful lot, but I do prefer the very narrow depth of field that the longer lens produces. It's largely a matter of personal choice, and some people may find they prefer the 60mm shot compared to the 420mm shot. So I spend a bit of time walking around the meadow. There's literally hundreds and thousands of orchids here. But you need to spend a bit of time looking for a really nice specimen. This one in particular is really nice. It stands up nice and proud. It's got some lovely leaves on it and flowers there. And also it's nicely, the background is quite a distance away. So it'll be quite easy uh, to throw that background out of focus, which will make the subject stand out nice. Although it's only 10 foot away there, it probably looks a little bit sort of more than that because I'm actually photo videoing with a wide angle lens. In the next clip of video, I'm going to be showing you the distance that I would be photographing them when I'm using a 60 mil lens. So here I'm actually photographing with the 60 mil macro lens. The distance that I have between the front of the lens and the orchid is only probably something like about 12 inches, 14 inches. The big advantage of using the Olympus for this sort of work is that you can use the articulated screen. So instead of having to lie down on the ground like I was on the previous video, I can actually just sort of flip the screen out, compose it on the actual screen, Take the picture. Don't actually have to use the tripod to be honest, I can just do exactly the same. By holding the camera like that and taking the picture. This 
this particular orchid is one of the paler, pit, very pale pink variants. Um, most of the orchids are sort of purpley colour, but this one in particular is very, very nice. So I'm going to use a little 60mm macro lens. I'll focus in on it, again using the articulated screen so I don't have to lie down on the ground. Take the picture. Now I've noticed looking at the, the, the picture on the back of the screen, there's actually a slight distraction in the background. There's actually an, an oak leaf here. So I'm going to take that out of the way. Sometimes you have to do a little bit of gardening just to make sure that you've got it right. So don't do too much, but certainly removing little bits of twig or anything like that, it's not a problem. So when you come to a wildflower meadow or an orchid site like this, you need to spend a bit of time just walking around looking for decent specimens. This one here is particularly nice, so I'm going to photograph it with the 60mm macro lens. On the day that I filmed this video, I had ideal conditions for orchid photography. Soft overcast lighting and virtually no wind. But there are days when conditions are far from ideal. In windy conditions it can be a real problem. In these situations you have two options. Option one, is to increase the ISO speed to enable a fast enough shutter speed to stop any wind movement. This is often the best option. You will find that even in windy conditions there are times when there will be a lull in the wind. It's best to wait for these moments and then press the shutter button when the wind drops slightly. The higher ISO enables you to use a faster shutter speed which will stop the slight wind movement. Option two is to use some form of plant stabilisation. Using this method you will only be able to photograph the head of the plant because it will be anchored via the stem. For this the Wimberley plamp is a good piece of kit. I anchor the plamp via the plamp ground stick and then gently hold the stem of the plant with the very soft jaws of the plamp head. The tripod I currently use is made by Benro. This tripod came with a short stubby central column and this is very useful as it allows me to get the tripod legs flat on the ground to achieve a low viewpoint. It is possible to hand hold the 300 plus the 1.4 converter because the image stabilising in the Olympus is very good. I do however like to use the tripod for plant photography because it enables me to use a more considered approach. Using a bean bag is also another good option for getting this very low viewpoint. Another method for photographing orchids is to use a wide angle lens to show the plant in its habitat. These type of images can be very striking. You can obviously only take this type of picture when the orchid has a relatively unobtrusive background. In a wild flower meadow this is generally not a problem. I've found that the Olympus 9 to 18 mil f4 to 5.6 zoom is particularly good for these type of shots. The beauty of this lens is it will enable you to focus on a plant literally an inch or two away from the front element of the lens. It is also a very sharp lens. In this situation I would be photographing at its widest aperture of f4 so that I can have the orchid pin sharp but the background is slightly out of focus. When photographing wide angle habitat shots it's a lot easier to photograph these handheld rather than using a tripod. I will either lay down on the ground and look through the viewfinder to take the picture or I kneel down and then compose and focus the picture using the articulated screen which can be flipped out to the side of the camera. I will finish by showing once again the comparison slide that shows the difference between the picture taken with the 300mm with the 1.4 and the picture taken with the 60mm macro. I hope you found the video helpful. Please check out my website www rogerhansfrps.com as well as my other YouTube videos. Thanks for watching.